All right, coming up next, a matchup to determine the baddest man on the planet. The UFC heavyweight title is on the line. Well, for a long time, he's been mentioned with the baddest men on the planet. For a long time, though, the title fight eluded him. Not anymore. Here he is, the number one heavyweight contender, finally making this walk and cracking a smile. He's waited a long time for this. He's not expecting a 25-minute war. He believes he has the power and the skills to get this thing done quickly. I guess we'll find out. So here he is making his way to the Octagon for another heavyweight title defense. This has been the baddest man on the planet now for several years, and he has taken on all comers more often than not, leaving them twitching on the canvas, knockout power for days. The question is tonight, with a challenge like this, can he walk out the way he came in as the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world? Tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. The Russian is 31. The Canadian is 45. He will have an 11 inch reach advantage. All right, now to get us started, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out Madison Square Garden Arena in New York City. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet six inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Presenting the challenger, the giant. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a grappler, holding a professional record of 29 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of the Republic of Dagestan, Russia, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Habib the Eagle So here we go, round one of this highly anticipated tilt between the strong striker and the decorated grappler. Any chance that these guys mix it up or are you just expecting them to stick to what got them to the dance? I'm expecting a pretty straightforward approach from both of these fighters. The striker will try to lead with his punches and his kicks, and the grappler will try to time a takedown, time a clinch position so he can start to work towards a lot of those great judo throws that he possesses. Once on the ground, he is in his realm and will start to chase submissions. That's a big strike right there. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the guy. Mark, so there's the early takedown. He told us on Thursday he didn't necessarily see a path to victory if he couldn't get takedowns. That 
is certainly a good sign. Right away, he got the takedown. I don't believe they could have imagined that it would work so well so early. Great job. Well, he's got his back now. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. All right, side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Nurmagomedov's going for an arm here. side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. If they try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape. Maybe look for a Kimura here. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by Nurmagomedov. Oh, flush knee to the body. He's got the length advantage in this fight and certainly made it count in that exchange. Oh, misses with the jab. And they set him. Shot a double leg. Oh, massive slam. That'll change the complexion of this one. Now potentially working on a submission instead. Oh, nice. Kind of push the arm down, maybe stepping into a crucifix. Wow, you don't see that very often. Oh, he's in trouble here. Wow. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you looking for? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns in the opposite direction, you throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Push him off. One minute to go in round one. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Nurmago Medov gets caught with that punch. He's treading water now. Got to find a way to move those feet. Well, we talked about his reach advantage off the top. Made good use of it there with that punch, DC. Yeah, he mixed it all up. Powerful leg kick land. Right, he engages in the single collar tie. Right hand punch with the clinch. Oh, and he lands another takedown here. Just doing a nice job not telegraphing his shot. Clean entries. The Olympians kind of like what he sees. I mean, over and over, he gets to the legs before his opponent reacts. By beating him on the entry, now it's up to the opponent to keep up. But this guy's playing chess. His opponent's playing checkers. He's playing chess. He can't keep up. Once he gets to his legs, he's got to beat him defensively before he gets his hands locked around his legs or his body. All right, let's check out some of the action, DC. What a display of just sheer punching in that last round. I mean, he looks like a boxer. He looks like a professional boxer out there throwing and stringing those combinations together. He landed those big punches over and over again, and it was this one right here that really did change the tide of the round. You ready to play? Ready. All right, round two. Watch the strike. Swing and a miss. 
with that straight left hand. Oh, collar tie. Oh, goes to the ankle pick now to get him down DC. We'll see how he chooses to proceed from here. Got the ankle kick. Let's see how he advances from this position. Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committed to his bullet. He chose his jab. He may throw the right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down on the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's got to be confident that it's going. Oh, off gets the takedown. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. You gotta move him off, and you gotta cover. You can't be off to an angle. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Somehow stays in the fight. Oh, diving punch lands. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are gonna take their toll as this fight goes on. Allows him to get right back up. He did a great job securing that ankle pick, but did not react to the secure top position. So just like that, back to a standing position. We will see who has the advantage. Far working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. Oh! Turn on the elbow. He's going to chase the submission finish. his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, how about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him. Know when, when to hold him. Yep, there absolutely. Jockeying for position in the clinch. Both fighters here trying to get a more dominant position. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Well, you saw his reference in the tail to take DC. He's got the reach advantage and certainly made good use of it there in landing that chip. Oh, and he lands another huge knee there as the taller fighter uses his length well yet again. When you're in a clinch, you can pull down on the head and land these beautiful punches. Oh, nice punch there by the Mongo Man. Just misses there with the left. Look at him drive his chin into his own body with that body. Double leg shot. Oh, perfect entry to slam him down. Like he's transitioning an armbar. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jujitsu guys. And attack an armbar. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Oh, now he's in trouble. Submission defense there. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestling stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. So get to your handstand, up, fight the hands, 
breakaway and escape, but it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. You ready to fight? Ready. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Punch over the top. Oh, single collar tie here. Oh, nice land with the knee. You see the taller fighter having no issue getting the limb to the target thing. Well, not only has he stayed aggressive as he was in the previous round, landing a high volume of strikes, but he's also been efficient, not just with his strikes, but also with his body movement. Complete performance out of this fighter here tonight. That's a pretty good right hand there by your teammate, Khabib Nurmagomedov. You're so worried about the wrestling that when the hands come, you're not expecting one game of wrestling. That was an amazing takedown. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Marco Medov's got an arm. Looks like he's trying to lock up a Kimura. It's in there deep. There you go. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less controlled because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. All right, he's got the hooks in, DC, working off of his back. Now look for him to attack the neck of his opponent to try to get the rear choke. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, you got to stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Now connects with a right. All right, single collar tie now. Left hand punch with the clinch. Well, just exhausting watching some of these takedown attempts. He's unable to get it there. And he's attempting it over and over again. How long before he gets discouraged and accepts that this is going to be a stand-up fight? Takedown there by the Mago Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Buck. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is the opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to got an angle here to try to change the position. He's gonna tag off on here. Oh, we're getting a finish here. This might just be a matter of time. Not tapping out tonight. All right, watch out for the setup here. DC, I know you don't pay your bets, but I'll bet you 100 bucks he goes for another takedown here. If I don't pay, then why are you betting me? I'll yell in the octagon. Take it down, come. Take it down, come. Over and over. He's securing these takedowns. to go. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Fighters back to their feet here. Another single follow tie. Man, striking class is in session. Beautiful punch there. Great job landing. What a damaging punch. Now, oh, and a quick entry. Great single entry. Rotation by punch is taking for a right. 
Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. All right, three rounds down, potentially two more to go. We are headed to the championship round. All right, let's take a look back at some of the replays from that last round. Unbelievable to see these high-level competitors get in each other's face, tuck their chin, bite down on the mouth guard, and just let it all hang out over the course of five minutes. All right, so here we go with our fourth round of a possible five, and a lot of fighters change up their training camp when they're fighting five rounds versus three. Yeah, you gotta change it up. You have to mix things up because fighting for an extra 10 minutes is not normal. Guys don't do this normally. It's a 15 minute fight. So you have to do things physically and also mentally to make sure that you're ready to go that extra 10 minutes. Nice straight punch. And they separate. Quick level change. Oh, he see. went single. Rotate head outside. This dude's going for a ride. Oh. A technique, what a takedown, great high impact skill. You could feel the canvas reverberate here. Bro. I mean, right there, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> It's like me running anywhere, John. <laughs> right. Solid strike on the ground. He's putting him in exactly the position he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Back to the feet now. Magomedov gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. Oh, knee strike right to the midsection there. Well, he's been good tonight, but he missed with that. He went higher on that one. Oh, he landed another great shot to the body. They're really starting to connect at a high percentage now in the latter stages of this fight. Oh, and the ankle pick to get him down. We'll see if he can capitalize. Got the ankle pick. Let's see how he advances from this position. Nice punch lands over the top. Man, doesn't take a lot of these kicks to produce redness. Look at the left side of his body there. Nasty. He's grabbing the back of the head, pulling forward on the head, and then lands a beautiful punch. This can change the fight. Another takedown land. Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Now the guy's got on bar. He's attacking it on him. Recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you gotta move him off and you gotta cover. You can't be off to an angle. Oh, now he's in trouble. Oh, that was a violent tap there, so he submits him with the arm ball. I mean, just steps ahead of the competition where you're playing checkers. He's playing chess in the ground fighting, and it showed tonight in this big submission victory. He gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He does a great job of staying patient. He doesn't rush or panic. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble the entire time when you're this good in the submissions.
So there he is, the baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion of the world, a title that every heavyweight wants. He has it after the win by submission here tonight. He leaned on the grappling, and he got the job done in a big way. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Deans called to stop to this contest. At two minutes, 58 seconds of round number four. Declared the winner by tap out due to an armbar. And still, the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Habib, the Eagle, Well, DC, you know what it's like to be the UFC heavyweight champion. It's not the easiest belt to defend. Kind of made it look easy to I mean, that's why the belt changes and changes so fast. Things change so quick at heavyweight. But with this gentleman, with this guy, you know that he has all the skills to reign atop a volatile division for a long time.